All right, this is episode 100 of the How to Do Your 20s podcast. I got Jordan back on. He's been a repeat guest. We're live streaming this for anyone that, I mean, obviously you're not able to watch this. It'll be on the How to Do Your 20s YouTube channel. And uh, what is it, the J Herbs? J Herbs, J A Y U R B Z Z. So this podcast episode will be a recap of the last 100 episodes, but it'll also just be me and Jordan kind of going off on tangents, probably do a little recap of the last few years, what we've Sweet. been up to. So let's let's start off. Jordan, how, are you, how have you been? Wait, you good. Well, I have a question what? real quick. Sure. That first episode I was on, what number was that? I think it was like 13. I can, I'll look at Are we going to go through that when we go through all 100? Uh, yeah. I mean, I just want to... Okay. It's not going to be a one by one we're going to go over it, but <laughs> as we're talking, I might, you know, if we come to a blank point or something or... Uh, okay. For, for some reason, yeah. One thing I really like about having followed, I mean, I've listened to a few of your podcasts. I don't listen to many. I don't really listen to podcasts in general. Um, Joe Rogan tickles my fancy often enough, but that's about it. Um, but I have listened to a few of yours, and I've enjoyed just sharing my story of where I've been and like thinking about that first one, like what, almost three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, like two and a half years ago. The so I started the podcast. I was in Medellin. I was living in Medellin, Colombia. I think I had you on not too much longer after that. No, you were in there. Oh, was, when you started. Still, yeah, you were there. When I interviewed I, you. Was I like, was in oh. Bali and you were in Medellin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me- Medellin is how you properly pronounce it. But I there. always... Was that? Yeah, but no, some yeah, Spanish accents you go, je, yeah, yeah. for the double L. Other times it's just silent, right? Yeah, there they say Medellin. Medellin. But anyways, yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, let's talk about... Uh, obviously, you haven't been on the podcast in a little while, so I want to give an update of what you've been up to in the last few months. I've more or less been moving to Hawaii, <laughs> which was not the intention when I when I saw you last. So we were here. I saw you about three and a half, four months ago, right? And I was kind of looking to like move to LA. Like I'm 29, and I'm like ready to. Basically, I've said by the time I'm 30, I'm gonna like have a somewhere I call home, start like making a family, whether that's with kids or just with a partner. I don't know. Um, have a routine, a root, basically just a routine is what I really want to get shit done. But, uh, yeah. So I was looking at LA as being that place based on like, you know, it's kind of where I come from. I've got a network here. It's a good place for entertainment. And I also think it's one of the most progressive places on the planet in all spheres. So where I've been spending time with on the big island of Hawaii, I think that's the most progressive place on like a spiritual level. I hate saying that, but like in like a freedom of expression zone, like it's one of the, when I was saying it's one of the, it's one of the coolest places I think that's on the planet on the big island because it literally, there's so much space for you to be free and express yourself however you want. Um, But yeah, this LA though has like the entertainment, the technology, the yoga, the people meditating and doing kirtan. So LA is really cool. And um, so, yeah, like three months ago, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Hawaii for a few weeks and then I'm going to come back. Uh, my plans were canceled on me. Plans being a, a woman um, canceled on me like a few days before I left. So I didn't know what I was going to do, where I was going to stay. So I rented a Jeep, a four by four. They ended up giving it to me for the same price as a normal car. So I lived in a Jeep for two weeks. And I just yoloed around, started a business, made, met my like soulmate business partner that I'd been like calling out to the universe to meet. Anyway, I don't know how much you want me to talk about this right now. But yeah, I ended up being there for three months, only leaving because I had some commitments here that will will provide for me monetarily. And also uh, I'm planting some fruit trees and avocados at my parents' house because I want them to be prepared in case food isn't as simple to go purchase at the grocery store all of a sudden so yeah i came back for that and then also i'm embarking on a world tour with this new project of mine uh but it was like i was totally just like at home in hawaii i had gigs people paying me to do videos i had a whole crew and network i was all like the greatest friends i'd ever made i felt like i had like a tribe and a family like for the first time ever so like three months ago i'm like yeah i'm gonna figure it out in la i'm gonna figure it out with money and so expensive town and not having a car and the fucking traffic and the fucking stuck up people that i don't enjoy being around like i was really trying to like get into something that would have had a lot of tension yeah (laughs) so uh hawaii made me realize like yeah that's not really for me so i do love la still and I love a lot of you people in it, but yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm meant to, 
have a 24/7 home base here. Let's talk about. I mean, since the first episode, so that was what let's say, let's say three years ago or whatever it was, or maybe it was two years ago. How have you changed, and like, what kind of lessons have you learned? I've learned a lot, but I was thinking if you want to do this hundred episode thing, maybe we could throw in anecdotes as we go through your topics. Okay. Because I was almost thinking like, you know, the stuff you talk about, there's a lot of lessons to be learned in there. Like I learned a few lessons by listening to some of your podcasts really? with those different entrepreneurs. Okay. And there was like the blogger, um, was it relationships or the erotic who I was in India. I remember lying on my bed trying to escape the traffic that was all outside and I just remember it was so I'll, I'll just yeah. I'll go through and I'll, I'll read some of them and then we can uh, go there. So one of the first episodes, actually, one of the episodes I was really happy with my so for the first episode, episode zero was my story. But then after that, I did an episode. Should you give away all your possessions and become a monk? And I had a guy that basically that's what he did. That's still one of my uh, favorite episodes because it was just really interesting hearing him talk about. Here's someone, uh, I've had this idea, and I mean, you're kind of living this idea now, but I've had this idea of, do I want to give away everything and just like, I don't need possessions and I should just, you know, I, I don't know, go be a monk somewhere. I mean, and talking with him is like, yeah, it's not as great as you might think it is. I don't know. Any thoughts? So I, uh, really synchronistic kind of fun story. I was just on the, I went to three islands in Hawaii the last three months. And um, the, I went to the third one, Kauai. Because I had bumped into someone on the big island that I had met in India three years ago. I had met this dude and I actually interviewed him for this film I was working on at this yoga academy. And there I saw him on the big island just walking down. I was like, wait a minute. Are you Avi? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I met you in India. He's like, no way. I'm living on Kauai now. I'm starting a yoga studio. So long story short, he needed video work done. So I came out to his island to work on. Anyway, he, was, he had been a monk for 10 years. Wow. Yeah. And he would say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all it's gonna have to be. I, I think the the realization I personally came to at least is I I want as I get older, let's say like I'm ninety, a hundred I'm I my hope is to live to be hundred and twelve. Uh, for reasons I'll get into in another time. But anyways, as I get older, I wouldn't mind giving away my possessions and actually kind of uh, secluding myself and trying to attain inner peace. But I think the easiest way to do that is Instead of just hiding in a cave, like right now I'm 28, instead of giving away everything, going in a cave and meditating and realizing I don't need anything, I think the better way of doing it is to get the stuff and then realize I don't need it. And I know that's probably not the most... Uh, right. Well, okay. So you asking me what I've been doing the last three years and then that's the first episode. <laughs> Should you become a monk? Well, that's kind of who I've been for a long time, just in my own way. Like I feel the more I learn about, I don't know, Hinduism and different old ancient ancestral like uh traditions i guess is the only way to put it but you know there's different phases of life where you're meant to learn where you're meant to accomplish and then where you're meant to like let go maybe and uh i think in our culture in western culture that letting go is retiring mm -hmm. but you're still holding on to a lot yeah. <laughs> you know like your pension your your house this and that but you're letting go of the stress of working in like hindu culture you know in some sects of it Letting go would be, yeah, you already raised a family, you already, you know, your kids are grown up, you've succeeded in your business or whatever. So you let it all go and you become a monk. Yeah. Um, but there's other paths where you do that at a young age to, to gain enlightenment. So you go, go meditate in a cave or go do yoga in an ashram and have a guru, like a spiritual master that you learn from and you're devoted to because you're learning from them. And there are people that do that for a long time, but the point is not to do that forever. The point is to do that, to, to gain some, some illumination on what life is for you and who you are to then return to the world and kind of share that light, share that love. Because if you're not, if you don't know who you are, like, and you don't love yourself, how are you going to love anyone else? And, and what you're talking about with the, the sex of Hinduism, that was a big thing I heard. And I might have heard it from, I don't, I don't remember where I heard I think I was actually studying Hinduism because I, I was going to do a YouTube channel where I talk about different religions and different, uh, just a bunch of different topics. Uh, one of I actually do have a video if anybody wants to watch it. It's Learn It in 10. And the first video was Western Philosophy in 10 Minutes. Um, so anyways, one what of the videos, channel, what channel is that on? It's, it's, it's a channel called learn it in 10. That was the only video I ever did. Oh, yeah. it, it got like 30, 40,000 uh, views and my channel has, I don't know, almost a thousand subscribers, but I ended up stopping it cause it was way more work. But one of the videos I did, 
that I ended up filming and it ended up being blurry. It was out of focus the entire time was this religion channel. And in studying Hinduism, at least what I read was there's four different parts of life. The first part you're supposed to just you're supposed to learn as much as possible. And it's all about learning. And then the second part is all about raising a family. This third part, I forget exactly the details, but yeah. it was like so an in between yeah. phase and you let it go. Yeah. And then the fourth phase is, be a monk, basically, or well, whatever. That's like what we were talking about earlier, the, like the Ayurvedic phases of life, that's the same thing. Your vata, pitta, kapha. That kapha is when you when you let it all go. You're like, not meant to have it anymore, so, yeah. to, so to speak. Um, for me, though, like, okay, so I brought that up because the way I've been going about it and the way I think the new way of going about it, if we really want to apply what we've learned from Eastern religions and apply it to us as Westerners, um, not even apply it. No, sorry. Take that back. Apply it to us as a new species of East and West because we're a globalizing species. Um, apply the West and the East. And the West way, I think, is how I've been doing it. I've been literally vagabonding around in different forms of artistry, in um, different forms of, of traveling, of relating with people, of how I spend my time, this and that, finding who I am. Right. And I think this is a path many people take. And even in, you know, that's the path of the ascetic in, in India, too, is you just drop it all and you go, you know, you're on, you're on your spiritual path. So I've been doing that a lot, a little less like a little less uh, consciously. I didn't really realize I was doing that, but I was doing it. And then finally I realized, like, OK, I think I figured it out and I think I'm still in that. Like, OK, I figured it out. Now, how do I make it me? How do I come back into the world and make it me? And so that's what I'm doing now. And I feel like I'm right on track. I'm 29, 30 years old. And so now when I hit 30, it's like I'm going to I'm going to have a home. I'm going to have a, a, a partner, a family, whatever that is, stability, a routine. And I'm going to be who I'm meant to be now. And maybe I still will travel, but there's going to be more of like that foundation because I'm past that airy stage of life of fi figuring out who I am, which I equivalent equivalent um, <laughs> to uh to that monk stage yeah just this new modern version of that yeah so I'll, i'm just gonna read the next nine episodes i do and whatever right. spikes us <laughs> we'll we'll that way we can go off on tangents uh the next one was finding your purpose passion and work you'll love we can talk about that making money with youtube that was a buddy of mine adam that's a great episode actually backpacking couch surfing living the nomadic lifestyle that was me. that's episode, episode four. four yeah Jeez. you were early on yeah uh yeah that was that check was that one on. out everyone yeah i think i even put that on my channel no it's in a playlist on my channel yeah, yeah. that that was a good one i'll just i'll quickly read some more and we can come back to this becoming a digital nomad your path to freedom who was that with that was i forget the guy's name it was a it was an acquaintance uh another podcast i do the build my online store podcast this guy knew someone that was living in Medellin at the time. And so I reached out to him. He's got a, a or he's got a website and on his website, he makes a ton of money from like, just it's all digital nomad stuff. Like that was actually, okay. So but he makes money as a digital nomad. He has like a, from by digital nomads partially. Um, no, I mean, his main thing was that he told me and he didn't get into too many specifics, but he has some kind of a travel company, like kind of like an Expedia but he makes all his money off referrals basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also has like a pretty famous, I'll have to look up the name of it, but like within the digital nomad community, a famous digital nomad blog. I think it's mm. might be nomadic notes. That might be someone else though. Um, actually, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pause here for a second. Cause this kind of gets me off on a tangent. It was interesting talking to him because he loved being a digital nomad. He loved traveling around. And as we've talked about on past episodes, I enjoy traveling, but I can't, I'm not a nomad. I'm just not, I'm right. a, like the more, actually something I've been thinking a lot about, I'm a farmer. Like I don't really in the sense of, I like planning. I like figuring things out and like my brain, the way it's calibrated is much more, uh, towards farming. I, I also don't get me wrong. I want to go hunting and that's a, that's another side tangent. But I think that I, my dad, for instance, and Jordan, you know, obviously know my dad, he would have been the best hunter like back in caveman days. He would have been like the best hunter. And you know what? I would have been a decent hunter, but I would have been the one that figured out farming. And that's how I always thought about the two of us. Like he would have been the one that's like, what you're going to plant seeds in the ground and something's magically going to happen. And he would have totally made fun you of slacker. me. for it. Yeah. And he's like, what are you doing? Like the only way to get food is to run after and catch it. 
And I would have been the one that's like, no, like, look, I've, I've understood it. I've seen that these seeds turn into plants and we don't have to keep doing that. And that's how my brain works. I'm really good at planning in the future. Anyways, the reason I bring that up is part of that is the nomadic lifestyle is very much, you know, moving, 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 constant change. And I do like some of that, but I need some stability in my life. I need to know this is where my gym is. This is what I do for fun on Monday nights. This is, you know, and what I'm trying to work on now is being flexible as well. So it's like, okay, like for instance, right now, like I had a plan, but I'm like, all right, Jordan said he's going to come over and we're going to do a (laughs) podcast. And I'm like, all right, let go. Let's, let's do that. You know? Um, but anyways, yeah. that's my side tangent. No, and we've talked about that over the, I don't know, maybe not the years, but at least we did a couple podcasts when I w- came back from Europe. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think we've, we've mentioned how you and I are on like the same path on opposite wavelengths. Yeah. I'm trying to get more routine <laughs> oriented and you're trying to get more like in the flow, you know, and you know, my, you know, who I'm traveling with now, he calls it the flow gram. What does know? that mean? Flow get gram. in the flow gram like be in the flow but like make sure there's a program for it <laughs> yeah and that's what i'm trying to figure out and one of the ways actually this is kind of a, a cool thing one of the th- ways that i've realized how to do that is i need pillars throughout my day i need to know um at 12 o'clock 12 to 1 o'clock i go to jujitsu and you know if something more important comes up it's not the end of the world it's not like it it's not like football practice. You know, when we were used to do football practice, you miss football practice. It's like you're punished. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah. Like if I miss, <laughs> if I miss jujitsu, it's like, all right, well, yeah. who cares? Travis's dad was my football coach <laughs> for, a, for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I learned true punishment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Don. <laughs> but it's, it's also like little things like that. Like I like knowing that, uh, I started taking a class at the community college. So it's, I'm only going once a week. It's a Monday, Wednesday class, but I know Wednesday nights, that's when I go. And if I can't make it on a Wednesday for some reason, I go the next Monday. And I do like having those pillars. To me, having that set in stone, those little things, means that I can be more creative. Because when I have a full day of like, I can do anything I want, I kind of get stuck in my head. And I'm like, well, what's the most optimal use of my time? Maybe I should do this and maybe I should do that. But when I know, okay, I've got three hours before jujitsu. What am I going to do? And it also makes me get up a little bit earlier because I'm like, all right, I want to be productive before jujitsu and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I've found lately, like, I mean, I'm coming from like full circle. When I was 18, 19, I needed everything structured. I'm a Virgo rising. (laughs) I needed everything like I need to know. I counted all my calories in an Excel file. I had my schedule, my routine, everything. Then I went and studied in France, started smoking weed, partying, hitchhiking, and realizing like, yo, it's all good, just chill. And I went the complete opposite direction, which was against who I was, just like I needed to experience that. So now I'm kind of coming full circle where like, okay, how do I be chill, but also have my shit together and get stuff done? And what I'm learning over the last few years of traveling and filmmaking and starting this nonprofit corporation and all that stuff is... I, as long as I have a time during the day where I can pull out my laptop and get shit done, like it can only, it may only be an hour, but like I have so much to do. All it takes is like one little accomplishment for me to feel like, okay, today is successful. Today is good. Like I don't need to be working all the time and I want to be working a lot of the time, but there are some days where I'm just not meant to work, whether it's because I have friends in town and or I'm just not feeling like it, or it's a full moon, like whatever, whatever it is. Some days it's not in the flow to, to really sit down and work for a solid like four or five hours or even one hour. But for me, it's really tough to not work because I need to feel like I've accomplished something. So it only might take 30, 40 minutes on certain days, but it needs to happen. I want to echo that too. I, that, that's something I've also struggled with a lot in the sense of, for instance, Monday, I just, I didn't feel like working at all. And like I I started the day and I'm like, I'm going to work. I'm going to push through it. And I'm just like, no, you know what? Oh shit. I'm supposed to be somewhere. I just realized. (laughs) Anyways, I uh, I was uh, in like (laughs) 15 minutes, but I'll call, I'll give them a call later. And it's cool. Case in point, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Well, it's not a big thing. I'm, I'm doing some neurofeedback uh, from a guy that that did a later episode. I'll talk about it. Neurofeedback? Neurofeedback. Like you're getting your brain hooked up? Yeah. So they hook my brain up to something. I watch a screen and I can kind of control what goes on the screen. If I, if my brain is in a good state, let's call it. And this is all like science. This isn't like some pseudoscience thing. 
It, like, it measures like the different wavelengths and measures how much alpha. I saw this on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. How much alpha, how much beta you're giving off, how much uh, delta waves, whatever. I want to do that. How can I do that? It's expensive. Or, oh, you have to pay for it. Well, okay. So I got the science project. Yeah, so yeah. what I did is I had this guy on my podcast and he's in Culver City. And so he's like, yeah, you know, come on down. We'll scan your brain, see if there's any you know issues we can help with. And they found like, I mean, it, they say everybody's got brain trauma. It really scared me when they first said it, but I guess I have some cross pattern brain trauma. I've got like, you can see my brain doesn't fire as well on my uh, front right lobe and my rear left lobe. And they're like, well, that's consistent with, uh, being a tailback in yeah. <laughs> high school. Yeah. That's consistent. <laughs> and the line back, you know, just g- g- hitting a lot. And I would always, the funny thing about it is I'd always hit with my right shoulder, which is like, right. It's also the right side of the yeah. head. <laughs> And I remember Shane, you know Shane Vereen? Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I've, I've had some a big hits, but I remember two hits, me and him, and it's not like he ran me over. you go to the same high school? Yeah. So that was like in a practice. Yeah, yeah. Me and Shane Vereen in, in practice. Well, because like I was the linebacker and he was the tailback and we're like, no, we don't want the other person to, you know, get the better of us. So <laughs> male, we crashed. Male ego, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, no, we crashed hard and like we just fell to the side. It's not like he ran me over. Which probably makes it worse. It probably would have been better if he ran me over because then it's right. like the force is going oh, that way. God. No, it was – I hit him, and it was like we hit a brick wall. Everything turned green for a second. Like there was a good two seconds, which doesn't sound like a long time, but when everything turns green, like everything was a shade of green. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like is this going to be forever? It was long enough for me to think, is this going to be forever? Which <laughs> explains the, the brain trauma in the rear left hemisphere, uh, occipital lobe back here. Anyways, I'm doing this uh, neurofeedback, and I'm not going today. So, um, Well, what about the front one? The front one, um, I mean, interestingly enough, so the, he kind of says like, oh, well, there's some things that, it's, um, that that front lobe does in the more collo- colloquial terms or whatever. It's like that, that part of your brain would be creativity. Uh, and he said, uh, he said, that's not really as true as you might think. He said it might have something to do with like general mood and like happiness and well being, which I could see. I mean, there's been times in my life where, I mean, I'm generally a pretty happy person. But this though. is considered like trauma, like something that is always there. No, or- trauma in the sense of like, you know, getting hit with a baseball bat is trauma. Um, so, and you'll never forget that hit with Shane Vereen. I'll never forget that. That was, Dude, that was I, intense. I don't have any specific hits I remember, but like. Dude, I never liked football. I oh, yeah. never fucking liked playing it. I did it like because my dad liked me doing it, and I thought like as a guy, like I was supposed to do it. I don't know why the fuck I kept doing it because I didn't have the balls to say no. I guess. Yeah. But I never liked it, and I don't think I ever, maybe once, I don't think I ever really like gave it my all in like a hit. Oh really? Yeah, because like when I saw so, like you like coming at me full speed, like, <laughs> I don't want to hit that. I don't care how many bads I have, I don't care how strong I am. Right. Like, I was pretty strong back then. Yeah. I didn't care to do that. I'm not. I'm. I just feel like more. I'm too gentle. Like I don't want to do that. Um, it's so weird that our culture puts us through that. Right I of went passage. the the year before high school. I was uh, one of my dad's friends came, and I guess he told me afterwards. He's like. What did he say? He's like, yeah, you, you know, I was on the sidelines and you hit this one kid and you said sorry afterwards. <laughs> and I'm like, that sounds like something I would do. I I had mixed feelings. Um, there's definitely times where I did enjoy football. When I was doing good, when I blocked the punt against Hart High School that ended up making us win the game and beating Hart High School for the first time and my picture was in the LA Times, that's a good <laughs> feeling. You know, yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely an ego feeling. Was that our junior year? Uh, it was my yeah our junior yeah, year yeah and we played Hart first and we were but we should have won oh really yeah but our, I didn't remember that something happened with the defense I don't remember but like sure we were winning like most of the game and then wow. we fucked up at the end and then you guys ended up winning like we were we could have beaten that streak yeah yeah I mean so anyways uh, moral of the story uh, oh but real quick things. about the brain scanning yeah, yeah yeah so you can just pay to go in there and or whatever they they scan you. Like, but you said you can change the look. Yeah. So what it does is it a, a, a good way of explaining it almost helps you get into a med- meditative state of mind because when you're not in like a meditative state of mind, nothing happens on the screen. So like your brain naturally wants to get the little frog to jump across, you know, the screen, mm-hmm. for instance. And so it's just feedback. So, you know, because for instance, I mean, maybe you're better at it than most people, but when I'm doing meditating, I'm like, all right, in my 
getting closer to what I should be doing or farther away. So do you go in there and meditate and see what happens? Not really. Uh, I will kind of, but it's, I, I wish it was a little bit more like that. I would love to try that. Yeah. 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 It's, there's, there's certain ones where you do meditate. This one is, it just rewards your brain. And it's supposed to be a very passive thing. You're not supposed to uh-huh. do anything, but I find myself, um, certain protocols, they can put the, the electrodes on different parts of your brain and reward different things. So certain things, I find myself, everything becomes clear. It's like, it's like someone took a windshield wiper and just cleared my vision in a, just a beautiful way where like I can notice details on things and it's just a much calmer, even the way I talk, I notice the way I talk kind of like after doing meditation or yoga, the way I talk at the end of a session changes. I'm much more relaxed. So I'll, Refresh. I'll go over some other episodes I I've done uh, traveling in your twenties. That's like everything we talk about. So that's a good one to skip outsourcing, <laughs> outsourcing episode eight and seven. I highly recommend if you have got some kind of a business, does outsourcing mean like to India or just like a virtual assistant, Uh virtual assistants, but generally Philippines, <laughs> but generally the Philippines. I should listen to that. I you really, should. I really need some fucking help. If yeah. Anyone, it's, it's cheap. I'm going to take this moment to shout out. If anyone <laughs> wants to, Get involved with some media making and nonprofit extravaganzaism. Talk to me. Absolutely. Talk to Jordan. Uh, Want to th- throw out an email? That's or? all I got. No. Um, uh, yeah. Jordan at perception travel TV. There we go. Nice. All right. So then I had one about teaching English, traveling in China. Skip that one. We can come back to that later. Episode 9, 10, and 11 was all about how to make money online with via e-commerce store. Those were some pretty good episodes. Uh, then, let's see, 12 and 13 were the same thing. Then I did a year in review. I've been doing a lot of those, actually. Yeah, there's another one right now. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. Motivation. Uh, that was a good one. Episode 15. Bucking the norm and getting your freedom with Tim Conley. That was another good episode. I guess I'm just oh, gonna, that's the one I listened to with Tim That was Conley. a good one. I was on a bus in Nepal. Yeah, I learned a lot from that. That was one of my favorite guy. episodes. I actually spent some time. I don't edit a lot of my episodes anymore. I pretty much episode uh, edit none of my episodes anymore. But that one I did edit. Was and that the one you were saying there's extra content about him? Like right. or something about LSD? Uh, I don't know if I don't I, know if it was him. There was one I heard you. I was like, man, Travis is such a good marketer. He's like, sign up for the mailing list if you want to hear the secret talk about microdosing LSD. I was like, oh shit, I want to sign up. On that. Might have been. Yeah, I was doing that for a little while. I was trying to get people to sign up for the email list. Yeah. I, dude, I've been doing this for so long. I get like one person adding to the email list a month. Uh, I've got about nine. Well, it's probably more than that. Bad though. I've got like ninety-three people on my email list for how to do your twenties. And it, the hard thing is. If you're listening to a podcast, you're not going to go stop and go join an email list unless I give away something like, I don't know, free hand jobs. Yeah, I'm that's not the giving only thing. I'm not giving away free hand jobs. It's not worth yeah. it. I mean, I'd sign up for a free blow job too. Well, that's like another level. <laughs> like, I don't know about that. You ever watch that Silicon Valley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That season finale was that season. That one? was the greatest. That was like the most genius thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's like, yeah. well, no, and that's totally that's totally how my brain works though. Where it's like, wait a minute, what is the way we could optimize this? Well, you'd want you'd, it's got to be dick to dick, dick, dick to floor ratio. Yeah, well, yeah. what's the dick to? It's not how tall they are. It's how far is their dick from the floor? Yeah. And, well, then we got to organize it by length. And, and then it's like two dicks per hand. We don't want to waste any good strokes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, what's the next one? No more dicks. Dicks in the hand. Um, what up, mad magician? Thanks for joining. We got real style, real men. That's episode 17. Sex, hilarity, inspiration, and most importantly, unintentional celibacy. Oh, I listened to that one. That too. one was good. That's yeah. when I was in India. Episode unintentional 18. celibacy. Yeah, she's hilarious. I know what that's like. You know what that's like? Or you don't know? No, that's the story of my life. That's the story of your life? I've learned a lot through my unintentional celibacy. That's like where I've come into a lot of my like like kundalini tantric powers is like by never having sex and needing to know like what do i do with this fucking energy this horniness are you not having sex because you can't or because you purposely decide not to no it's unintentional celibacy okay (laughs) what that says yeah i just wanted to make sure no i definitely can i just no also because i'm i don't have a lot of game but like that yeah that's not what i mean by can't um yeah 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 just because it's not happening Let's see what else we got. Number episode nineteen, whiskey: a brief history of classiness. It's a pretty fun episode. 
uh, break the trance, invest in yourself, and achieve your goals. I forget who I did that episode with. Actually, I think I, I remember the guy's. I don't remember the guy's name, but I remember what he looks like. That's a really good one. That's one of the actually. I think the big one of the big lessons I've learned is, like, invest in yourself. Spend money investing in a better lifestyle, or not better lifestyle. Excuse me, better life in the sense of go back to school. Uh, if you. For instance, I'm taking a design class at SMC. doesn't mean you have to go get your degree. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Just go learn. Go learn. Yeah. Go learn. That's a better way. Of, thank you. That's a better yeah. way of putting it. Go back it. to school. <laughs> well, go back to school in the sense of read a book. That's the best. I'll tell you right now. I 100% believe spending $10 on, not and not to get all like, you know, whatever, lifestyle guru. Spending $10 on a book is the best ROI you can possibly spend. I have a question for you. Sure. Speaking of uh, lifestyle guru. Sure. So you have a podcast called How to Do Your 20s. Yes. And eventually you're not going to be in your 20s. Anymore. Everyone asks this. Yeah. And eventually you're going to have that million followers and you got to be the face and yeah. you're going to have to start getting shit. Will you become that lifestyle guru? Uh, I don't or think is it, it naturally going to happen? Well, I don't think it has to be a negative thing, first off. I never said it was. Okay, so... I'll tell you what my plan is, and then this might answer the question. My hope is eventually when I do turn 30, I'm going to go to Copenhagen uh, in Thailand. I've always pronounced it wrong, but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Copenhagen. Uh, Copenhagen. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't know how you say it. It's not my language. Yeah. Uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen. <laughs> uh, I want to go there. So it's it's you know beautiful beach, island, whatever. And I just want to write the book, How to Do Your 20s. I want to take uh, everything I've learned. But also, like, talk to experts. It's not just what I think. I want it to be what experts think of the... About your 20s. Yeah, about your 20s. So, and, but broken down by section. So it's like, okay, what's the best way to travel? Uh, how, can you most, how can you get the most bang for your buck from traveling? Uh, how to use, you know, airline miles and points. Um, how mm. to start your own business. How to freelance. How to quit your job and, you know, do whatever you want. Or maybe you want to keep your job and you just want to make more money. How to get a raise. Like... Every, I want it to be fully packed of all the different tidbits and everything I can, like everything, every hack, every life hack I've found specifically geared towards your 20s. So then you can get people to sign up for your mailing list. Yeah. Get a free copy of my ebook, How to Do Your 20s. Well, no, the, the, the book's going to cost money. I want to be New York Times bestseller. Or maybe a free chapter. Yeah, free chapters. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do as part of the marketing thing is give away like half the book for free. That's cool. Yeah, and then it's like, my hope is this is the book that people buy for the kid. At least one person buys this for the kid that's graduating college. Don't like, you think that's a little romantic going to write it at Cop in Thailand? Or not? That's what I want to do. I don't care. Why not like Hawaii? Well, I, I, I can move around. Uh, I, I Copen <laughs> Copenhagen is my favorite place in the world currently. Oh really? Did yeah. you go there when you were when you? I've been there twice. Me? Yeah, I, w I went there. Right? Yeah, I went there once when I stayed with you, and then I went there again for a yoga retreat. It's my favorite place that I've been on planet Earth. I'm gonna throw in a plug real quick. Go for so, it. So Travis couchsurfed with me when I lived in Bangkok. I knew him before, but he was looking for a couchsurfer, and he saw me show up. And he was like, "You you live in Bangkok?" I'm like, "Yeah." Um, and I'm releasing my Bangkok book soon. I don't know oh, if yeah? I told you I'm writing a book. It's like, uh, I don't know, 200 pages, 250. It's about my year in Bangkok, teach English. It's all about hedonism and indulgence. And I guess like my journey through that, you know, like trying to learn and expand while just being bombarded by party all the time, which I great, you know, graciously <laughs> accepted as a part of my life. But, um, I guess I was always wanting something deeper and I had it before yet it wasn't good enough. So then I was in Thailand and I was like craving it. And anyway, I wrote a book about it and it's going to be done. It's going to be done very soon and I'm going to make an ebook and I'm going to put it um, on Amazon and I'm going to do a Reddit AMA soon and that's when I'm going to launch it. <laughs> I'm going to be cool. very cliche about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, let me know when it actually launches and we can, Get you back on the podcast, promote it or whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't know how long it's going to be till you release this one, but it might be done by then. I'm, I'm going to be releasing this one pretty soon, actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go over some other ones here. What do we got? Uh, da, da, da. Making apps and coding. It's museums. So I did a bunch of... I'm just going to pause here. I did a bunch of episodes because I interviewed the, the unintentional celibacy lady and she introduced me to a bunch of people and i was just like screw it like well, i'm gonna interview all of them so some of these episodes probably weren't my favorite episodes but that's okay 
how to write a book with self publishing. That was actually a really good one. You should listen to that one. Yeah, you really that there's a there's another book I'll find or another episode I'll find for you. Smart Drugs episode twenty four. That was good. Arts and Puppets. That was kind of funny. That was that was fun talking to those guys. They do these Shakespeare puppets. Profit hacking. Another guy. Wow, this is crazy. Going back in time and reading all these. Uh, let's see. Do a bunch of lessons from a lessons episode for episode twenty seven. Travel. I got episode 29 and 28. 29 was top 11 travel destinations for single men in their 20s. And 28 was top travel destinations for women in their 20s. Yikes. So any uh, any top places for single men that you can think of? No, because every person is different with their own tastes and what they want to experience. Oh, don't give me that bullshit. Travel. What, what do you, I well, mean, it depends on how, what, even in my 20s, each year in my 20s, I would have wanted a different place to go to. Like, I want a lot of sex. Okay, go to Bangkok. I want a lot of fun ass parties. Go to New Orleans. I want a lot of uh, hippie vibes where I can dance and like be free and trip all the time. Go to Big Island of Hawaii. Like, it's an infinite list. It just depends on what you're into. Okay, well, that, that was a better answer though, because <laughs> that like was specific. Okay, yeah. So what if you were? Uh, well, no, I think that hit all the big, all, all the big yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do I'm gonna skip some of the ones that I don't find that I don't think people should li- go back and listen to. Okay. I'm gonna stick with the interesting ones. I had a productivity life hacks one episode 32 that was pretty fun. Um, da, da, da. Making side money with side hustling. Actually, you're a bit of a side hustling expert. What we are talked you talking about that. About? Yeah. Well. What did you talk about in the podcast? So we talked about a bunch of different things, and I don't remember if it was this episode, but one of the, the best pieces of advice someone gave me is if you do have a corporate job and you're looking to make extra money, don't si- don't start a side business because unless your hope is eventually to make so much money that you can quit your, your job because it's so much harder to make $1,000 from a side business than it is to go up to your boss and say, yo, I want a $1,000 raise. Hmm. It's so much easier to get a raise than it is to start a profitable side business i don't know any thoughts well i mean i don't think any of my hustling is side hustling because like i don't really have a main gig so it's all side hustling then (laughs) it's all my whole life is side hustling and not necessarily like trying to make money but just because what i do like i'm approaching this phase where i'm just i'm looking at like like these side hustle gigs are actually like almost too lucrative. I need to be able to figure out what I'm doing with them now. Like there's too much money coming in. Um, and I don't want that. I don't do things for the money. I do them cause I like to do them. Um, and then back when I really did need the money, I could not figure shit out to save my life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would get lucky here and there. It always worked out, but I, you know, it took a while to get my shit together. So we have Still one person, it. just a side tangent. We have one person on the how to do your channels watching this. If you're if you're there, leave a comment. <laughs> Say something. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love let's to get see some who questions it is. now. Yeah, let's and do. We can do a quick questions. You want a magician, Joe? Anyone got anything to say? You're live. You are live <laughs> so on the podcast. Fun. I love having three. We have four people. We got watching. four people watching this. What about on the Instagram? <laughs> Well, no, people joined and then they left. There's no oh. watching right now. The funny thing about this is a decent amount of people are going to listen. So, I mean, how maybe. many? Um, well, can I ask that? Yeah, I mean, I, I usually don't tell it, but uh, let's say a thousand people. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, shit. I It's so funny. Like, this YouTube channel I have, there's somehow 5,400 subscribers, and it's all just for these fucking weed videos Yeah. that I don't even really. I mean, I don't even smoke weed that much. <laughs> what? I, I believe in it. It's a great medicine, and I okay. use it as a tool sometimes. But all these stoners, which is not a bad thing. I'm not saying that in a bad way. All these people that like to watch weed videos are subscribing to my channel, even though that's like 5% of my channel. Right. Like buying legal weed here, buying legal weed here, there, 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 buying weed in Jamaica, you know, trucking through the jungle. And it's kind of like been how I've. I'm not even marketing the channel, but it's what my marketing is. Right. Is there's these search engine optimized videos for weed and it shows up and then it always, it's bringing all these subscribers in, but the stuff that I'm really into in my travels, like very few people care about. So Joe is an example of someone that cares about it. And then there was someone else, maybe it was you, Joe, that uh, came from my brother's channel that said, uh, I like your work. Keep doing it. My brother's got a shit ton of followers. How many followers? Um, what does he do on youtube he has like over twenty thousand subscribers he makes com- comedy 
Oh, really? Yeah, he's he's a funny motherfucker. Oh, huh. yeah. I think he's still finding his 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 exact thing. But I think we all are during our twenties, right? And I think that's how you should do your twenties: is explore, <laughs> explore, explore, explore. Don't limit yourself. And then by the time you're coming out of your twenties, like us, you know what you're good at. You know how you work, right? And you know what makes you happy, and all those things will naturally equate into success. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I am starting to finally feel like I've got, I've got it down in the sense of I know what I'm, I know what I'm good at. I know how I can make money. I know where I want to be. Like it, all the pieces are starting to fall into place. All right, that's your whole book right there. You don't even need to write a book. Right there. That's it. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, so my my whole point for the book is gonna be. To help people get to where I'm at by my 30s or help people to get further along faster. You know what I mean? Like, what what do I wish I would have known in my 20s? Right, but also, right. what what it's not just about me because, like, I don't think I'm that special. I don't think, you know, whatever. I think that what I like doing is learning new things. And, and sharing that. And sharing it, teaching yeah. it, yeah. And I think that part of also writing the book for me from a very selfish perspective is I want to take all this knowledge and condense it down to 200 pages and then leave that chapter behind. No pun intended there, <laughs> but book puns. Okay. We got a question. Yeah. You can answer first if you want. What, what was something that gave you the mindset you have now? A lot of shit Dude, uh, working on a lot of, um, just going through and trying different things. I think for me personally, I've, t- I've talked about this before to Jordan. A big thing for me was limiting my variables. So, what I mean by that is if you look at an old math equation, like for instance, multidimensional algebra or multidimensional calculus, which I don't know if you ever took like the higher in calculus classes, but anyways, when you're trying to solve a problem specifically for calculus, but also for algebra, you can only solve one variable at a time. So if it's X plus Y equals three, and then you have another equation, three X plus Y equals five, you have to solve the first equation using the variable Y equals three minus X or whatever it is. So that being said, what I try to do is uh, let's say there's four or five variables in life. Yeah. Right. Hold on. What's I up? have two hour parking out there. Don't I, uh, you can go check. Yeah. Uh, so Jordan had to run out to go fix his parking, but to answer your question, let's say there's five variables in life and there's obviously more, but one of the variables might be where you live. Another one is who you're friends with. Another one is, what you do for work, how you make money. Another one is who you're dating. And let's say there's a fifth one. I, 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 let's just stick with those four for now. If you're trying to figure out all four at the same time, it's like trying to do a multidimensional calculus problem in your head. The easier way of doing it in my mind is to pick a spot. Pick a spot that you want to live. Okay. And now that you have that, it becomes easier to figure out, okay, well, what do I want to do for work? Or who are my friends, maybe? Who are my friends? And once you have a good place to live and good friends, uh, then it's easier to figure out what do I want to do for money? What do I actually want to do? And I think it helps just to be kind of grounded. So that's mine. I'm going to let Jordan talk next. I'll pause it. I'll read. Yeah, my answer to that, I mean, I probably suspect it's why he asked it, but my answer is mushrooms. (laughs) Easy. I remember... You know, I was saying earlier, like when I was uh, studying in France, I was 19, like away from home for the first time, like out of my bubble, learning a language and like everything was crazy as it was. But I was also doing mushrooms for the first time, you know, and like weed is pretty psychedelic in the sense that it can change how you think about things. It opens you up, even if you don't do it all the time, just all it takes is once to be like, holy shit. And then I think mushrooms are the same way, just at a different level. And I was doing that and I didn't really understand what was going on, but it, I, it definitely felt like I was expanding and exploring new realms. Um, and then obviously I've done them many times since, but yeah, that was the first thing that came to mind when you ask about my mindset. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it's just a quick side tangent. A lot of different things have been, I've, I've never done psychedelics and never done any, nothing. No, you've done weed. I've smoked weed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which w- weed? Which is pretty psychedelic. Yeah, I I, I, I know a lot of people make it sound like oh it's not that big of a deal and whatever and, and I'm sure psychedelics are a lot different. But I had some pretty crazy experiences on weed. Like, I don't know. We can get into no, that me another too. time. I mean, because the thing about weed is it's not just that it changes your whole perception on everything. Like oh my god, but it's uncomfortable. 
yeah to be really high it's really not comfortable you trip it on mushrooms it feels so good <laughs> really but okay. i mean they, it could get negative right no I no mean, if you've got negative things in your life that you got to deal with but that's just tripping that's right. why you trip that's why it's a medicine it helps you deal with something and then it's over and it's gone okay. and then you feel amazing but you feel amazing physically even while it's happening after the puking you don't puke on mushrooms not necessarily i've, 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 I've had do, I've heard, okay yeah i've heard from a lot of people yeah. differently all right let's let's finish purging we're we're almost halfway so i'm gonna try to be a little <laughs> bit quicker about this let's see i mean a lot of these episodes are good it's just not worth bringing up here right here so episode 40 i got build your brand episode 41 write your book another how to good 42 episode 42 that's the book for you how to market your book a how it's called market your book a how to guide so I'd, i highly recommend anybody out there that's trying to write a book Man, I, I need to listen out. to all these. Yeah, th that's a really good one. Um, another one that was kind of interesting was Life Off the Grid. I had a guy that he lives off the grid for episode 44. Where? I forget where. I think he's in like Arizona or something. But like, to be fair, I, I, if I remember correctly, he's kind of still in the transition phase. He wasn't fully off the grid yet. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. Uh, a lot of these are just like me interviewing different random people. Cognitive enhancers and entrepreneurship excess, uh, success yeah. or secrets or something. Yeah. A year of purpose and meaning and settle, start a lifestyle business. Wow. A lot of psychedelic research. That was actually a really boring episode. <laughs> like I'll be honest, episode 54. I thought I was going to get this guy on. that's going to talk about all the benefits of psychedelics, but he was mostly just doing like MDMA research with vets and he didn't want to talk about how fun it can be or whatever he did. If you, actually, I will say if you're going to do some psychedelics, he did have some, um, tips on how to ease the process and how to properly recover. One of the things we From talked about, Alex? yeah, like in the sense of one of the things, and maybe I've even talked to you about this. Actually, I'd, I'd totally love to. I see a lot of people that they just seem like they're burnt out. Like they've done so much LSD that they're like in a different realm. And my <laughs> understanding talking to different people is they didn't give enough time to like readjust back into reality. Like basically they expanded themselves so wide, but it's like part of it is also talking, uh, talking about it and like kind of realizing how can you incorporate this in your life. But almost if you keep expanding, keep expanding, it's like you're, I don't know, a little too out there for me. Yeah. I mean, you got to, well, first off you got to stay grounded, but if you don't stay grounded, that's okay. But we all have that college phase where we just do a lot of acid all the time because it's fun and especially when you're going into higher doses and naturally when you're doing it more frequently you're just going to keep upping the dose um, my experience with that was, was more with mushrooms but on a lighter level it w was with with lsd but uh you need to have a reabsorption phase kind of like traveling mm. you know if you're just traveling the world that's great and like i do this for the most part but it, it's tough and i've learned how to do it but you need to have a home you need to come back and reflect and absorb like okay what just happened who am i blah 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 might take a few weeks and then you're ready to go travel again so i associate that same metaphor with the psychedelics like if you don't give yourself a chance to come back it never ends and then yeah there are people that just fry their brain from doing it way too often yeah that um, that's obviously i think a fear for a lot of people that have not done it i don't know my argument to that is they could be like that anyway like oh maybe you know there's weirdos and it's probably okay to be a weirdo we're all different like uh, we sure we're all necessary in this world to be a diverse human species okay we have another question Do yeah you, you want to keep going go for it question although we're so connected with the internet we're also divided in what ways do you try to bring people together and what advice would you give people i'll let you start with this one yeah well um in what ways do you try to bring people together and what advice would you give people? Um, I try to bring people together. Well, okay. To just to, uh, to d address the grammar of that, like language is how we interpret reality, right? Okay. Like this is one thing that really hit me hard in Hawaii recently was that a lot of the tribe I was hanging out with, they speak very consciously. They're very aware of how they're saying things because, you know, like the word should carries with it some adrenaline like you should do that you know it's kind of like an order like oh i should do this well why should i do anything i'm doing what i'm doing and like should almost adds an element of guilt like i'm not doing what i should be doing like what does that mean so okay when i like what what do i try to bring people together 
I don't really try to do anything anymore. I just do what I do. I try to be happy. I try to do what I feel I'm supposed to be doing in this moment. Um, I, I don't try to live in this should, right? So in the same way, um, I try not to try. Um, I have intention with what I do. And after that, I do my best to not be attached to the results. I don't always succeed with that, in which cases I am just trying. So as far as bringing people together, my latest project is Shepherds of Aloha, which is videos about people coming together through music with my good friend Trill LeBeau. He's a rock star and he's just playing music and we see how it brings people together to sing together. And even my film going to Nepal with a camera on my forehead after the earthquake in Nepal, we go around singing and playing music and videoing how everyone's dancing, even though they just lost their homes and maybe even loved ones like music makes people happy and it makes people smile. So I really feel that seeing other people smile brings us together in this digital age. And music is another one of those digital wavelengths that can travel. Like, who have you ever met that's like, oh, no, music's never touched my heart. <laughs> Would there be one person on the planet that goes, no, music doesn't affect me? Like, I, mean, I don't know. I don't think so. We've all been affected by music in some way. And so... I do play music. I don't consider myself like a musician performer type, but uh, yeah. So how I bring people together is I try to share people coming together with music, with food, with events, whatever that is. Um, I, and I'm not sure what you mean by what advice I would give people. So you could clarify what you mean by that, Joe. I'll just, I'll, I'll quickly answer that. I don't think this is the answer you're looking for specifically, but one of the ways I bring people together is organizing like entrepreneur meetups. So how did that go by the way? Was it the first one? I've had the, multiple. Oh really? Yeah, no, I've had a ton. Yeah. Yeah. I, which one are you? I, oh, I only saw an invite for one on. Oh Facebook. yeah. No, there, there's been, I've had, I've probably done 20 or 30. It's really good. They're all, wow. they're usually really good. Every once in a while it's like, you know, people come that I'm not really that interested in talking to, to be honest, <laughs> but I try to, I guess that's one way. I mean, two is this podcast and like I have a YouTube channel, the effective e-commerce YouTube channel, which has got three, almost 3000 subscribers, uh, which has been growing pretty rapidly. I just started, I just got serious about it not that long ago. So I think right now, to be honest, a lot of the ways I'm bringing people together is selfishly, like in a sense of, I want to meet cool people. So I'm going to bring together a bunch of really so cool people. Them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and same thing with the podcast. I want to talk to cool people. So I'm going to talk to cool people on my podcast, but on the same time I'm helping out hopefully other people that listen to the podcast. Well, and that's, what's beautiful about, about true reality beyond what our culture tells us is like selfishness is like the highest form of like giving because what you're doing, what you love to make you happy, it's actually enriching other people's lives. You know, and, and <laughs> that is what kind of pisses me off about some of the, the hippie types that are like, man, corporations are so bad and like business people. I'm like, well, no, they're they're saying I got this really cool product. Like, yo, do you want to give me some money for it? And it, they're, the people are like, hell yeah, that's a cool product. It's worth 20 bucks for that widget. And I don't know. To me, a lot of the people, I think, just see it differently. I mean, you can defend hippie what? people no 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 i think everyone i mean a lot of times those arguments are made blindly without looking at the bigger picture yeah. or just very like let's make everything black or white <laughs> yeah and to me it's if you don't want what someone has then don't support them and you know what uh, i i guess the other thing is like some corporations do some shitty stuff like yeah that happens but so do some people you know, it, it is, <laughs> and that was actually, uh, another, i mean same thing with government i feel like a lot of people are anti-government but i'm like well wait a minute why is government inherently bad? Maybe it's like, okay, they do some shady stuff, but they also do some good stuff. Yeah, like, you know? like roads. Yeah. Some countries don't have very good roads. Fire department, police department. And that's, yeah. I mean, the police department to me too. A lot of people are like, yeah, but they're like, you know, they're they're doing some bad stuff. I'm like, yeah, but overall, you're probably happy that we have a police department. <laughs> yeah. you're, and if you're not, like, I'm going to mug you because what are you going to do about it? I would say most police are out there to, like, help. And yeah. they're, they're really good people, you know? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's just, like, statistics. One, one out of a thousand people, first off, are crazy, period. They're just <laughs> batshit crazy. Probably one out of a hundred people are, like, just having a bad day, you know, or whatever. They're, like, not in a good place. So with that, I mean, if, if there's any follow up to the question, no, that's good. Let's move on. all right, so let's 
pause really quick. Oh, nice. All right, we are Coming back. back. And I'll let Ariana in- introduce herself in a second. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm, I'm going over all the episodes that we've done. Let's see where we left off at. Psychedelic research. Hack learning. So do you have any favorite episodes? Me? Yeah. Um, I do. I... <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, no pressure or anything. Um, I love, oh man. Okay, so personally, I've been listening to more of like the workout ones because I'm, I'm trying to get more into that and staying in shape. Um, there was one like recent one that you did about like the sugar. It, yeah. I forget what his name was. Um, Let me pull it up here. The same, it was like the... I don't remember what episode number it was. Right? The evils of sugar. Yes, the evils of sugar. Sugar, man. Yeah. Holy shit. It's crazy. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. I didn't listen to your podcast, but holy shit. Yeah. Sugar. I was just going to mention, actually, this morning when I had um, wheat bread, and there were two grams of sugar in that. And I was just like, I feel like that's so unnecessary. Right. Like, any type of sugar in my bread. Yeah. Um, but that's just an example. There were tons of stuff. Was this prompted by you seeing all the sugar products? At, at the West? yeah uh no no this was i've been anti-sugar for a long time <laughs> yeah no but the podcast uh, oh that podcast no that podcast no because that podcast happened before expo west was like last weekend yeah oh, okay so okay. that podcast i recorded in january hey i i couldn't help but see one i hadn't seen before the yoga meditation chakras one yeah that one's really good yeah. i like that one a lot who's that with uh her name is elise greenspoon i think is it uh yeah, and that her Greenspoon's her real last name. That one I'd I highly recommend to anybody listening to this. Let's see what else we got. What did you learn? So a little bit. So that was uh, I told you about on our walk in Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Copenhagen, the second time I was there was a yoga retreat. And while I was there, Elise was my teacher and she went over what are the different chakras and she did it in a way that didn't make it sound like a bunch of hippie bullshit. Like she was, right, right. she said it like very uh, bluntly. She's like, okay, so let's say you have, um, let's say like, like the heart chakra. That's a good one. If you see someone and they're really closed off and they're like this and they don't want like, they don't want to hug and they're just like, they've been hurt. And as opposed to someone that's like really open, like, Hey, what's up? And it's like, you can visually see that same thing with the pelvis. If you see, I mean, a, a girl at the bar, that's like really kind of like open up. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, she's down. If you see, she's kind of like closed off and like, don't look at me. But did we never talk about this? Stuff we did too. Podcasts? We did too. Oh, we have, right? Yeah. But okay. I think it was after I, cause I, I think it was after I talked to her. Um, I wanted to talk about it more cause I was so interested in it. Yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. I had a question for you as the, the podcast guy yeah. on your hundredth episode. Um, like I, let's use the yoga and chakra like topic. Sure. Like y- well, remember we did the Tantra episode, the yep. Tantra episode. We talked about chakras and stuff and yes, activating we did. them and different exercises for them. And I could have sworn, I mean, it, it's, maybe it was the unreleased episode where we talked about stuff like that with the actual body language. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious your journey in that whole line of thought, you know, sure. you know, like about tantric and all that. Kind no, of stuff, and just, just the chakras, chakras and the more new agey stuff. Cause I know right. you were never opposed to learning about it, but I knew you were never really into it. And now I see quite a few episodes on there. Oh no. I mean, I, I'm definitely into it. I just think it's a little bit more, more common sense than I think people want to, uh, give it credit to. So hmm. let me see the best way to answer your question. I guess, I'm interested in it, but I think it's not like necessarily just a chicken or an egg thing. Like, I think that's the issue. I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, you should do these mental exercises. And once you do this, then you'll release it. But I'm like, all right, well, why don't, why don't I work on stretches and at the same time work on getting over the mental barrier? And I think the stretches might. So I'll, I'll say this, and we've talked about this. If I have like a really good stretch, especially in the pelvis region, things just feel better. Like, hell yeah. Yeah. Things feel better. Both. And, but also sometimes even like flavors taste better. Like after a good yoga, I'm more mindful and things just like I can enjoy them on a deeper level. It's really trippy how that works, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And I can see and I always thought it was kind of bullshit when people are like, well, emotions are in your hip and this and that. But I can see why. Like the more I've kind of experienced, I don't know, the world, I'm like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Like on a logical way. It's not. I don't know. 
It's really interesting. On a related note, I was telling my friend about this yesterday. Um, I a lot of times when I can't comprehend the emotions I'm experiencing, it happens. It manifests in my body as okay. pain. Um, so for years, you know, I'd doing yoga every morning, every morning, every morning, and that was like my practice. And if there was something out of line energetically in another dimension of my life, it would suddenly tweak my back or, mm. you know, I'd pull my back out or I'd hurt my shoulder or whatever. And it would align with a chakra like 100 percent. And a lot of times it had to happen in this one spot, which would be my third chakra. Like I'm working too hard. Mm. Sometimes it'd be in between my, my heart and my solar plexus. And so it would be like a, I'm mixing work and, and love. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went through all of it, tweaked my whole fucking bag out. And then recently I more or less fell in love in Hawaii. And I don't believe in falling in love. I believe in rising in love. But, you know, we do that to ourselves. So she left and everything was cool, really communicated. Like it was like super just like mature, like it was what it was. And it was great. But I really like was feeling something in my heart that I hadn't really felt like ever before. And suddenly after she left i my whole shoulder like i couldn't move my arm i'm still healing from it it's pretty good now but like and now obviously it's not just from that it was a it was a mix of like driving all the time with like a honda element with a really sturdy steering wheel sleeping on floors and living in the jungle for months sure. but it all came to a to a point when she left and so then it was really bad for a while i had to wear a sling just so i couldn't use it you know like i don't go to the doctors i don't i, don't, I can't do anything about it tiger bomb you know and I couldn't practice yoga. It was like mm. really getting me. And finally, I had someone like doing some body work on me, and she was she got me right here, and I, I like couldn't do it. Just like a very gentle touch here, and you know it's all connected, and that's all the heart chakra. And she's like, "Yeah, I think you have a broken heart." And I realized like, "Wow, I think you're right." Like, because because in my head everything made sense. You know, like everything was communicated with her, and everything just made sense. It wasn't like I was leaving any stone unturned. But I wasn't communicating with my emotional body. <laughs> and so it came out in my physical body. And that was just from how I was living. It used to be through yoga. So anyway, like my big thing lately is kind of re realizing and remembering that our physical body is, is the representation of who we are on this plane in the 3D. And where your, where your physical body is at is where everything else you represent is at your businesses, your visions, your art, your emotions, everything. It all comes out in your body. So um, just the last thing I want to say, because I'm feeling it right now, is people give Southern Californians shit because we love how we look and we love to exercise and we love to look good. And you know what? That's fucking cool that we want to be healthy. And I don't care if it's for superficial fucking purposes because it carries over. Right. If you're exercising more and you're in shape, you're happier. There's just no I – can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't allow people to, to say that's not fair. No, it is yeah. fair because that's how the universe works. You know, I, I want to get on a side tangent actually really quick. It's a personal choice too. So. Yeah, and it's, you're up to you to make it a choice, but don't rag on people for being healthy. Uh, what's his name? There was a, a stand-up thing on Netflix I saw, and the guy was basically just talking about kind of making fun of all the fat people that like are like, well, you know, uh, kind of skinny shaming basically making fun of all the people that are like, yeah, we're overweight and like Hollywood should just accept us for who we are. And it's like, well, wait a minute. No, that's not healthy. Like that's not good for you. It's like, sure, you know, accept people for who they are. But at the same time, there's a, most people that are overweight, they should lose weight. Like it's not good for them. They're, they're not living ha life to their full potential. I don't, I don't know. That's my thought. I mean, I support, I support happiness and like I, I can't say I know for a fact that's not fair. You chew me apart, but fucking a man, it can't be comfortable to carry around a whole bunch of weight. Yeah. And if you're not comfortable walking, how are you going to be happy? Like, how are you going to be satisfied with sitting and doing your work or going on a jog or whatever? And like, yeah. I say that not knowing what it's like, but like, I, I support people being happy. I support you being yourself, but I know you're not happy sitting on the couch, watching TV, eating Pringles. And the, there's a difference too to me. Like there are some people, they're big boned. Like literally, it's just like I've seen some girls and guys. It's like you're never gonna be skinny. It's just not in who you are. That's different to me than the person that is eating shit food and they're overweight because of that. It's like no, you shouldn't do that. I like, don't even mean overweight. I don't even think overweight's a problem because I think people legitimately are that. But it's living a lifestyle. It doesn't have to be a physical lifestyle. It's living a lifestyle 
that brings out the joy in you. Like we all are meant to be joyous beings doing what we love all the time mm. and being around people that make us happy and make us feel activated. Like that's who we're meant to be. And so being overweight, I don't think that's an issue because I know a lot of people that aren't like great shape, but they're super happy and joyous doing what they love. So I, I what I know I just said was kind of harsh and I, so I don't mean that against anyone overweight, but what I mean it, it uh, for people that like a lot of us, and I do it myself, we hide from our unhappiness. Like we know we're not happy somewhere. So we hide behind it and then we attach ourselves to that and we get upset when it's touched upon, mm. you know? So it's like that whole thing is, so I support you being you, but I also support you growing. And sometimes we don't want to acknowledge truths, but we need to, we have to, and we need other people to tell us sometimes they need to say it lovingly and respectfully. And it needs to be understood that we all support each other, but you know, the truth can be tough. Yeah. All right. Let's go over some more of these. Let's <laughs> to get that out. Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, so a lot of these are good. Uh, so passive income, the smart way with Pat Flynn, episode 60. One of the things he talked about that, you know, we've talked about a lot is he said, if you have, let's say three projects and let's say you could finish each project in two weeks, rather than working on one project for one day, another project the second day and a third project the third day he's like finish that first project then go to the second project and then go to the third project and the reason for him was you'll make more money that way you'll be more clear-headed but i know jordan you do not feel Fuck this way no. i can't yeah. do that at fucking all because all my projects exist in all these different dimensions like and i have no other way of putting it um and they all kind of coincide like my big vision for my work like right now i'm 29 i'm about to release a film a book a TV series and a huge ass, well not huge ass yet, but a few com soon to be huge ass nonprofit corporation, you know, like all of my stuff is, it's like this pinnacle of my life at this point. I couldn't have done those one at a time because they wouldn't be what they were. Mm. Like who I am wouldn't have gone into it the right way. Okay. If that makes sense. So uh, like I said earlier, we're all the physical manifestation of us is a representation of everything else we're working with and all these different forms. So that comes out in my business and my art and my computer work, whatever the fuck's going on, it comes out in different forms. So for me to be who I am in this day, um, I can't do things one at a time. It needs to have, they need to happen side by side. The and bigger projects, not necessarily yeah. like editing a three minute video for YouTube. No, but like, yeah. And I, I have mixed feelings. Like I'm definitely trying to clear out my schedule. Like the next two months, the performance nut butter is going to launch hopefully May 9th. So that's about a little more than two months away. Um, I just want to say, yeah. based on what I said, disclaimer, I'm also someone that's been terrible at making any kind of money and providing for myself. <laughs> that uh, is a, actually a great <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> that's actually okay. Fair enough. I mean, this is kind of, like, you're someone that has a shit together in that realm. So you're and probably that guy too. <laughs> so it sounds like if you want happiness, it's do whatever you want. Like be, be sporadic, it, but it works out eventually. It works out eventually. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. you struggle. I mean, I've never like, not, it's never just because there's some fear of the unknown. Like what's going to happen next. Doesn't mean it's not going to work out. It just means you have to deal with this. Oh my God, what's going to happen next. And that is always going to be in front of us. If we choose to expand as human beings. You know, if we want if we want to keep moving forward and growing and progressing in anything we do, there's always going to be that leap of faith we have to take into the unknown. And I, I do like having multiple projects. And I've, t I've told you this. I like having multiple things going on. I just find I if I'm too distracted, if I have too many things going on, I don't get anywhere with any of the projects. Like I'm I'm thinking about one project, but I'm also thinking, oh, I got to go do this other thing and all oh, crap. And then someone emails me and says, hey, where's that stuff that was due for whatever? And then I have someone else that's in a different tangent and I can't I feel like I'm taking like I've said before to you like a thousand steps in a thousand different directions and I'm just like kind of staying still you know and that's where the art of like focus or meditation comes in like I was feeling that way yesterday morning like oh my god I have so much to do and I don't even know where to start I, it's all scattered but all it took was sitting down hunkering down and doing it all even when I work I have 10 things going at once you know I very rarely focus on one thing for for a day by the end of the day, I got 10 things done, but that's only when I'm in my own flow state. It's not when I'm stressed out and like didn't sleep well or didn't exercise. It's only when I'm in my, my zone. Uh, all right. So let's, let's, we're getting close to done here. Uh, I've been skipping obviously a lot. Seven steps to seven figures. That's for you, Jordan. What? 
I, that's one of the episodes I have is seven steps to seven figures. That was with me. No, 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 no. Oh. It's for you to listen to. Oh, seven figures like money. Yeah, seven figures of money. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? Yeah, I seven. thought you meant like figures, like body figures. No. <laughs> Let's see where else we were at. Um, another one that was kind of an interesting one. Actually, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do a tangent on this. Exploration of sex, BDSM, and I think there's some other stuff. So that was the same girl that did the unintentionally celibate. I don't know if you ever, if either one of you guys got a chance to listen to that one. Yeah, she was from New York. Yeah, she got her personality. Like she's very charismatic. It seems like I've yeah, never met her before. she's yeah, she's awesome girl. She I think right on that episode was like the, like the night before or like a few days before she had the first time she had sex for the first time in a few years. The second episode or the first one? The second one. Yeah, yeah, the second one. And, and this was her unintentional or intentional? Celibate? So originally she was unintentionally celibate, and then she decided she wanted to I forget what the name of the book. She was gonna release a new book that's like basically about banging and i mean not that she was gonna go out and bang a bunch of people but like exploration of sex yeah and so she did uh so she met a guy and and then she was dating him for, for a while right yeah 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 i think so person yeah <laughs> after that <laughs> <laughs> we're throwing the mics at her um yeah so anyways one of the really cool things though is she went to like like a bdsm teacher that taught her and a bunch of other people like, what is BDSM and all that kind of stuff. So that is a BDSM guru. Yeah, that's a fun, <laughs> fun episode. Boy. After that, I started doing. So I don't remember what episode number that was because iTunes has it listed weirdly. But after that, I started doing episodes with a bunch of people for the performance nut butter launch. And I, I talked to you, I think earlier, Jordan, about that. But I'm basically reaching out to gurus, reaching out to all these people in the health and fitness space with the idea of hopefully becoming friendly with them. So when I launch my product, hopefully they will share it with their Instagram, share it with their Twitter. And that is for anybody listening or anybody watching live, get a YouTube channel, get a podcast, get something so you can talk with these people. It just, it's a platform for you to be able to connect with people. That's what I always kind of tell people. And even with perception travel, one thing we do like, like in Jamaica, like we're going down to the school to help them start Instagrams and Twitter so they can share their creativity. But part of the deeper message with that or the deeper goal is start a platform. Don't have like goals. Like I need a million followers and to make money. No, just do it for you yeah. because that is an active form of expression. We're not all meant to have a million followers and make money doing that. But I think we all are all meant to express ourselves in our own ways. And I think that's why we love something like Instagram. I have friends from high school that Facebook's like their blog you know, they just bitch about everything. And I think it's cool. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, a podcast is like the next form for me. I really want to be able to do that. I love it. Like, cause originally I was going to start a YouTube channel for this, but I realized the only reason I was starting a YouTube channel was to be able to talk to cool, interesting people. Podcast is a shortcut right to that. <laughs> and at the same time, like I, the reason I did how to do your twenties was I wanted a topic that I could talk about and to anyone that I wanted to. And this was the perfect one. I'm like, all right, well, I'm in my 20s and I'm interested in self-improvement so that I could talk to a philosophy professor or I could talk to you, Jordan, like or anyone in between. Yeah. There's a lot in cool between. you got a podcast. That's what started happening with Perception Travel. I just started emailing like my favorite musical artists like, hey, do you want to make a video? OK. So I got to meet like some like, well, actually, mainly just one. But I got to meet this really cool producer that I was really into. And I was like starstruck. Oh, my God. And then same thing in Hawaii. That's how I was going around, just making videos with musicians that I vibed with. And it's a great way to meet the people. <laughs> you get to... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that exact... So I know we need, to, we, we need to get going, so we need to wrap up here pretty soon. Uh, I guess one question for you. What does the future hold for you, Jordan? What's the plans going forward? Well, it holds a whole lot of magic, Travis. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm going to do one last hurrah traveling and filmmaking and getting perception travel going. And then it's my intention to just kind of settle down for a bit. I'll probably still always travel, but I'm ready to have like a home base and I'm ready to be more like you and have like a routine um, for the time being. I've been learning working with like lunar rhythms and cycles and I really want to do like, you know, two weeks on like have three weeks, one one uh, two psychic weeks and one physical week and then one week off like the full moon. And really just kind of explore doing things in real life while also working with like cosmological cycles. Um, and at the same time, just kind of going inside myself and 
having a <sighs> a partner of some sort. So the reason we laughed when Jordan first said magic was because he asked me to cut out a five minute tangent he went on to about what he meant by magic. <laughs> but we'll we'll leave it there. I think this will we'll wrap up the podcast here. Uh, I think. <laughs> so that that is it i hope there will be at least another hundred episodes coming out soon yeah that's and pretty sweet dude by yeah, the way 100 episodes I've, whoa yeah yeah <laughs> all right all right we'll end it there thanks guys for listening and if you haven't checked out the performance nut butter check out performance nutbutter.com you can see the new project i've been working on i talked about it a little bit in this episode youtube.com slash j-a-y-u-r-b-z-z and don't forget to sign up for my email list, how to do your twenties.com. <laughs> if, if you listen to this whole episode, you know that nobody signs up for it, Follow but that's me okay. On Instagram. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I don't have any more plugs. Snapchat, Snapchat, Jordan. Snapchat though, for real. I'm all over that shit. J A Y U R B Z Z. All right. Thank you guys. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did make sure you hit the big red subscribe button down below. You can also check me out on Facebook and on Twitter. And I release a new video every Monday. And by hitting that subscribe button, you'll get those new videos every Monday. And this is really a podcast. It's also a website. You can check out the website. It's howtodoyour20s.com. I'll put a link right over here as well. And what it's all about is trying to improve your life. And we specifically focus on things that people in their 20s are interested in. So make sure you like the video if you liked it. Subscribe. Like us on Facebook and Twitter, whatever. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again on another video.